I don't care what anybody says, the Final Fantasy Spirits Within is one of the best sci-fi films ever made. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful singing spirits within. We return to life is stranger still. We're snooping through Chloe's house, getting to all of her secrets. Nope. Juice. Someone locked it from the other Juice. side. Juice secrets. There's no real secrets to be found. It Just bills. Doesn't look like the Price family is rolling in dough these days. It's a whole bunch of bills. They can never escape from these bills. No matter how much it changed reality, they only become more and more crushing at the time. As time goes on. Now this is the Chloe I remember. Always smiling and laughing. Not so much anymore. She was a skater girl. You may want to note that, uh, you know, Max liked the skater boys. Maybe she, you know, she's also into the female gender. I don't think gender is much of an issue for her. I haven't seen this place in five years. Seems like forever. Seems like that TV's 15 years old, man. Again, they're probably not doing that great financially with a... Uh, wonder what kind of insurance Joy still works have. at Two Wheels Diner. Best damn burgers in Arcadia. Yeah. I better get one soon. Appetizing. Well, we gotta have those. We gotta have those. I mean, that's pretty damn important. Yeah, I believe it. All right. Let's continue snooping. A jar? And it's full of money? Put it in your pocket. <sighs> I'd love to go to Paris, too. At on, this rate, they'll be lucky it. to get to Portland. Grab it, put it in your satchel. They don't need it. You need it more. You are a time traveler, Max. You have expenses. It's really important to be prepared at all times for any kind of time traveling expenses that might incur. Yum, that looks tasty. I do miss Joyce's cooking. Oh, yeah. Hey, I remember that stain. Chloe and I knocked over Joyce's wine bottle and we scrubbed forever, but it never came out. We got so busted. They're trying to scrub it with their tongues. It didn't work out. Damn, it's the couch. We used to pretend it was a pirate ship. Yar, sit on the Looks couch. Looks like a ship wrecked now. Come on, open it, chicken. Hold on, and I'm not chicken. Prove it. You drink first, Max. No way. It was your idea, Chloe. Whatever. Give me that bottle. Well? Tasty. Very tasty. Here, I, I want a sip. Sorry, this is not for kids. Don't be greedy. Give me some. Oh shit, the carpet! There's wine all over. What do we do now? My parents are coming. Cover it up. Once more, Life is Strange with its quiet moments of reflection. Chloe is one year older than Max, that's why she was teasing her. It is, it's just fantastic. It's, uh, I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that these are the small moments that uh, stand out as one of my favorite things in the game. If I took this picture, the deer would be standing on your ass. David Madsen hunts us for sport. No judgment. Actually, yeah, lots of judgment there. I really don't see the point, man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. I don't think... Uh, it's fine if you go kill something and then eat it. I can feel autumn pushing out the summer. Go kill something, chop off its head, mount it on your wall. That's, that's macabre, man. Don't do that. William used to grill awesome burgers for us. I wonder if he was the last one to use this. Probably. David kind of sucks at familying. We made this grave for Chloe's kitty. Poor Bongo. He never saw that car coming. Mwah, mwah. That took Chloe and me the whole day to draw. It's almost invisible now. True art and talent in display. You should be touched up. Chloe, come on, you're, you're really s slacking. Can't believe you have just let that fade like that. I, my feelings are so damn hurt right now. Oh, I loved this swing. William made it just for me and Chloe. Yet another space here where we can just sit and reflect upon our lives. She's a very self-reflecting person. What do you truly want to do when you grow up? Max, I'm already grown up. What about you? Travel. That would be awesome. Explore the world. Go far from here. Far from me? 
Thanks a lot, dude. Dude, you would totally come with me. I need a bodyguard for our adventures. I would be like Lara Croft, except real. That would be majorly cool. Totally. We'd have cars and boats and planes all over for instant escape. And no adults could tell us what to do. Count me in. What would you do while I was bodyguarding you? Maybe take pictures of our adventures. I would love to be a photographer. As if I ever could be. What are you talking about? Max, you are a photographer. Your pictures could be in a museum. Someday they will. I believe in you. She believed in you, Max. She believed in you, and you just left her in the dust. I hope that you feel like a piece of garbage right now. Alright, let's just get up. And continue snooping, because there's so much more to see. Actually, there isn't a whole lot left, I don't think. In this room, anyway. Well, let's move on to Madsen's little garage. Anything to be seen? Oh, yeah. I guess they're aging, these books. Yeah, because they get no use whatsoever. It's okay. I mean, shelves full of books is classy. I should be able to find the tools I need here. Let's start rifling through all of these shelves. Nothing. This is so lame. We're looking for tools. Chloe's stepdad is head of security at Blackwell. He wants to put surveillance cameras all over the school? How paranoid can you get? What a crazy reveal. Yes, we're looking for tools, and we, we find, you know, embarrassing details about uh, the people that, that I am uh, snooping through. That's okay. Chloe's stepdad is a veteran and a security guard? He must really hate her. Badass motherfucker. What else you got? Oh my god. Oh, wow, that's, that's gruesome, man. You're just not taking a picture of that. What the hell? Did you just leave that shit laying around? That's, uh, that's messed up in the head. Hmm, a gun is conspicuously missing in there. Wonder if that will play a role later on. Spoiler alert, yes, it does. Score. Derp. Thing is, was he really shooting in this garage? I, I don't know if that's safe, man. You need a shooting range for that. Anyway, there's a puzzle here. The tools are right up there. Boom, precision screwdrivers. Is, he looks like a pretty organized Except guy. I can't and yet he them. leaves the tiny awesome tools at the very top of this on top of really old shit. Uh, just, just a silly, just a silly man. That does not look stable. That was very smart, dumbass. No can reach. All right, I can time travel to solve this incredibly complicated puzzle. The game caught a, quite a bit of flack for, you know, the kind of foolish and dull time traveling puzzles. I liked it the first time yes, I did it. I can see how it could get really cardboard. old. Or and, and I do see how it's kind of ridiculous to be doing such small things with your time traveling abilities. But I don't know. I feel it's more of a statement. It's done on purpose. You're using this amazing power to do the most menial shit. And it's, you know, the, the epitome, the top example of misusing powers. Yes, you have mad skills, Max. Oh yeah, that was fantastic. Anyway, it's something that I wanted to do going in here. If you open this, you see... Oh. I should go back upstairs before Chloe freaks. Yes, yes, but there's so much more to see. There's secrets. Anyway... If you open this, do you see that Debbie Manson has been set up surveillance in the house itself? And Max always ends up telling Chloe about it. And I have never seen whether she doesn't tell her, all we need to do is not open this cupboard. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to see what happens. I am very much curious. This must belong to Chloe's stepdad. No password. Like it would help me find tools anyway. Not going to be wasting my time trying to get into that. I could try all sorts of swear words in there, but nah. Didn't make the cut. I wanted to make a. I was going to make a joke about that, but then I was like, eh, fuck that. That's, that's just kind of dumb. I wonder what's in those files up there. I have self censorship. I have. I can. I can tell what is kind of funny and what isn't for the most part. Here's another path least traveled Shit. thing. Butterfingers. Everybody. 
doesn't leave evidence. Or not everybody, I think it's 80 something percent. Reverses time after looking at these things. Absolutely. Kate Marsh? Why the hell would he have pictures of her? Okay, this is getting totally weird. Creepy. Holy shit, that is going a little too far, man. Alright. Most uh, players don't leave this here very rightfully so. It's pretty damn stupid. <laughs> but let's not. Let's uh, not erase our evidence because I have no idea what might happen. And uh, I bet that David will be even more mad with Chloe later. So let's see, <laughs> let's see how that goes oh, down. Oh dear. It's not enough to kill you. They have to display your head. That's what I'm talking about. This is macabre. This is gruesome. Why would you have a dead deer on your on the freaking wall? This is nasty, man. Don't do it. Don't hunt for sport. Look at Don't all hunt that food. for food. That's like enough spam for a hundred years. At least David is prepared. My wife, she's also she's not like a survival nut, but she does want to have like a big stock pantry in case in case the apocalypse happens. Check out the muscle car. Chloe's stepdad must be a gearhead. This looks in a very, very advanced state of disrepair, but you never know, it might work again. Anyway, uh, I think we have everything we need. And there's cool. nothing more to step open. through. Let's noop on. So we are basically done. But before that, this is an excellent time to just sit down right here and start uh, maybe writing down a little bit. Of, I mean, I can't see on that side. Uh, I write down a little bit of the journal. It's been a long, long day, and I think we have plenty of time to get this done. We have all the collectibles so far, we just need these two. Uh, but yeah, we could totally get through the journal. And uh, there's a lot of things that I want to note down. Because a lot of things have happened for Max, so let's do that. There's a lot of pages to go through, and I was thinking, oh, I should, totally should read through all this. I, I'm not gonna. It's, you know, it's just reading through it. I'm going to simply display these pages. And if you feel like pausing and reading these fantastic, fantastic characterization and backstory and all that good stuff, it's very, very good. It also gives you a little bit of reasons why, you know, Chloe and Max are, are not together and blah, blah, blah. And uh, moving to Seattle, uh, Max's experiences. Oh, dear. It is just so pretty, so neat. I really like, I feel like a bit of a, not a stalker, but a, a, a voyeur. <laughs> <laughs> reading through all this stuff is basically the diary of a teenage girl. It feels slightly wrong. Not going to stop me from doing it though. Uh, it's supposed to be me, right? This is this is me. I am I am inhabiting the role of Max Caulfield. This is not is not like I'm snooping into her life or nothing. This is not creepy at all. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's read through the new things that she has noted down. Which start Right here. Let's, let's just uh, take a moment and write down everything that has happened to us because it's been rough, man. It's been rough. And uh, absolutely feel free to click through the annotation if you just want to skip through this. But I feel like I need to write this down, damn it. This will be the weirdest journal entry I will ever make. So weird, I don't know how or where to start. But it started with the most vivid dream of my life. I was lost in a storm by the lighthouse until I came to the edge of the cliff. Then I saw a giant tornado headed for Arcadia Bay. It was so real that I could feel the rain stinging my face, and I was scared shitless. Then a boat hit the lighthouse, and I swear I actually felt like I was going to die. And yet, I felt this lighthouse was the safest place I could possibly find in this town. But I woke up in Mr. Jefferson's class, and I wasn't even sleeping. I almost fell out of my chair. Jefferson called on me, but I totally blew the answer. Of course, Victoria pounced on me and made me look like a bigger idiot. She's so awful. I hope she dies. Then I didn't even have the guts to turn in the photo for the Everyday Heroes contest while Victoria did her usual suck up to Jefferson. He's so cool. He clearly wants me to succeed. He's the best teacher I've ever had. I just, I just feel so shitty. I just wanted to get to the bathroom and to be alone and wash my face after that nightmare. Or daymare. I guess. Once I got to the bathroom, I saw this odd, beautiful blue butterfly flutter in, and right when I took a photo of it in the corner, Nathan Prescott came in freaking out, talking to himself. I hid in the corner, and this punk girl came in and they started arguing about drugs and money. 
Nathan actually whipped out a gun and shot the girl. This is where it gets strange. When Nathan fired a gun, I came around the corner and reached out for some dumb reason, as if I could stop the bullet, but suddenly I could feel the world twisting around me and this pressure in my head. Everything seemed to rewind and I found myself right back in class at my desk. I literally thought I had been dosed with some drug until I calmed myself down. I saw everything happen in class the way it did before. Major Groundhog Deja Vu. Somehow I was able to actually rewind time. I knew the only way to find out if I was having a breakdown was to go back to the bathroom and see if I could save that girl from Nathan this time. I had no idea how either, I just knew I couldn't live with myself if I let her die again. I escaped Jefferson this time by knowing exactly how to answer his questions and rushed to the bathroom. I hid in the corner again and I couldn't believe it when Nathan showed up, freaking out all over again. Then the girl came into the bathroom and before Nathan could shoot her, I smashed open the ancient fire alarm and scared both of them away. Victory! Until I got grilled by the security chief, David Madsen, who thinks he's Chuck Norris, Blackwell Ranger. Nathan Prescott almost kills a girl in the bathroom, but no, I'm the problem. I was so glad when Principal Wells stepped in to shoo David away. I wanted to inform Principal Wells that I saw Nathan waving a gun in the bathroom, but I didn't want to mention a girl. Or my new rewind abilities, for obvious reasons, I wouldn't know how to tell him without making me look crazy. He grilled me for being out in the hall during a fire alarm, I'm still glad I didn't have to tell him that Blackwell's most big fucking deal student actually killed a girl in a previous timeline. I'm sure he would have believed me. Maybe he would have said that it was a you problem. So my school day started with an apocalyptic dream and then ended with saving a life and discovering I have some kind of power to rewind time. I don't know how to top that. Everything feels so surreal right now. I can't talk to anybody about this. Well, the only person I could, I haven't seen in five years. I could confide in Warren, he's smart and knows science, but he creeps me right the fuck out. Until I can figure this out, I better stay on the down low with this stuff and focus on my classes. Warren sent me a text asking for his flash drive back, even though I hadn't had a chance to check out all the cool shows and films in there. I watched a few episodes of Doctor Who and X-Files, binged on Full Metal Alchemist, then Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, all kinds of Amazon women black and white badassery, Tetsuo, a total cyberpunk trip with amazing visuals, and Scott Pilgrim for about the millionth time. On a side note, I saw a missing person's poster on campus for Rachel Amber, a pretty Blackwell student who vanished. It's so sad to see her smiling face and think about the awful things that could happen. Also, the graffiti really don't help, they're all real nasty and humiliating. If there was a way for me to rewind back six months, I totally would. I had to go back to the dorm to get Warren's flash drive, and yes, Victoria and her Vortex Vixens blocked me from getting in, and even took my picture. It was so high school movie, I can't believe she did it. She actually told me to go fuck your selfie, though. It was funny. I don't know why she had to act that way. She already has everything she wants, doesn't she? And she forced me to use my rewind until I finally came up with a way to get her out of my way. I humiliated the shit out of her, and I took great pleasure in it. Look at the picture I took. I love it. I love it. I felt so fulfilled. I think that was the whole reason why I got this gift. Still, I can't believe I took a picture of Victoria Coding Pain for revenge. She did vow revenge, though, so I guess I've officially made my first enemy a Blackwell. I have a feeling it won't be the last. <sighs> More high school drama. Juliet wouldn't let Dana out of her room because she thought Zachary was sexting Dana. So stupid. Who uses the word sexting anymore? I was so tired from everything and since Dana borrowed Warren's flash drive, I had to intervene. Juliet told me Victoria was the one who gave her the inside scoop on Zach and Dana, so I knew that Victoria was playing them all. What a bitch! I snuck into Victoria's room and onto the laptop and found out that she was indeed lying through her ass just to create drama. Of course, I feel like a weasel going through Victoria's room and laptop, but only for a moment. I took great pleasure in rifling through her things and humiliating her further. Once I gave Juliet the proof that Victoria was behind this, I went to get Warren's flash drive from Dana. She was in a weird mood, so I had a look around to see if I could find out why. I found a home pregnancy test along with a note from Logan and a doctor's appointment. Dana admitted that she was pregnant and I realized that all of my friends have troubles that are just as significant as mine. Except I have time traveling powers, I'm pretty sure that I can top all of that. Bullshit teenage drama. 
I really need to get the hang of this whole rewind thing. I don't want to waste this power, but there has to be a reason it was given to me, so I better learn how to use it right. I could have used it for something as easy as warning Alisa that she was going to get a football fueled headshot. How selective should I be with this power? I do know for sure I'm never going to move a finger to save anybody from pain, because that's just not how I roll. I also saw David Madsen hassling Kate Marsh. I couldn't hear everything, but he accused her of something. All that guy can do is point fingers, and I got so pissed. So I hid around the corner and I took a picture of the action, so I could have clear and perfect evidence that this jackass is harassing the students. Of course, Kate was a little bitch about it and didn't appreciate the fact that I documented her instance of getting harassed. You'll thank me later, Kate. Come on. I was trying to do you a solid here. You need to look in the big picture, damn it. This day keeps getting stranger, though. This day just keeps getting stranger. I don't even believe what I'm writing. I can't even do a simple task like giving Warren back his flash drive without getting into a situation. In this case, though, I turn out half bad and half good, which I guess is the yin and yang of life. When I met with Warren in the lot and checked out his new retro wheels, guess who showed up? Nathan Prescott freaking out all over again. He got all up in my face to accuse me of bullshit. Even though I was scared because I know what he did to that girl in the bathroom, I was more fucking furious. I would have totally ripped him a new one if I hadn't been interrupted. Because then the girl in the bathroom pulled up in the truck. A truck that was taking two handicapped spaces and I called a complete asshole. My former best friend, Chloe Price. We both looked at each other like, WTF? Next thing I knew, I was in her truck as Warren earned his man card and tried to get Nathan off my ass. But he got beaten so badly that I am very, very sad that I did not take a picture of it. Seeing Chloe for the first time in five years was such a shock, I was almost paralyzed. Especially after realizing that Nathan had almost killed her right in front of me. Now Chloe shows up out of the blue to save me. Of all the bizarro and unexplainable shit happening today, sitting in Chloe's battered truck, listening to music and staring at her dashboard bobblehead might be at the top. So I tried to process the fact that Chloe and I were two best friends who didn't know each other anymore. She had blue hair, piercings and cool boots and I... I looked like a dork. I didn't know where to start and she wasn't exactly a standing novel of branch, you know, what with the staying off for five years without a text or a call. I was kind of a douche and I own up to it now, I suppose. So we sat like strangers. At least I had time to catch my breath and realize that in the parking lot melee with Nathan and Warren, my camera got busted up. So I couldn't even have taken a picture of Warren's beaten up face even if I had had the presence of mind to whip it out. I didn't care considering everything else going on, but he sucked on top of everything else. Going back to Chloe's old house for the first time in five years was like the ultimate rewind. Some things were obviously different, but some things weren't. The house smelled exactly the same as it did when we were growing up, some kind of mixture of cat piss and really old bones. Chloe's room was like an exploded version of her new adult self. Cool and chaotic. I could tell she was pissed. She wanted to blaze up and chill, so I explored her room to play catch up on what she was into these days. I love snooping. Then I found a photo of Chloe with Rachel Amber. Chloe freaked and laid into me for not calling her once. I deserved it. I was a complete douchebag. She had become best friends with Rachel and they were going to bail on Arcadia Bay and head out to Los Angeles for fame and fortune. I could tell how much Chloe cared about Rachel since she was the one putting up the posters. I felt even shittier about leaving Chloe alone all those years when she most needed me. You suck, Max. But Chloe is obsessed with Rachel, the missing girl. She says Rachel vanished after meeting some amazing dude. Probably some psycho online. Chloe wanted to smoke out and be alone, so I went downstairs to find tools to fix my camera, among many other things that I rifled through. Oh yes, feel good. Feels good to just take stock of everything we've done and write it all down. Really important stuff. Anyway, if you actually sat through all that, congratulations on being awesome. Because, because you know, that was the, like, the best content you have, could have ever experienced. I love that they have the same old answering machine. And there's a message. Why would I leave it for the rightful owners of this to listen to it when I can just play it? cruising home off duty and told me he saw you near that garbage dump. Now I've ordered... Told you to stay away from that place. It's dangerous. And you got no idea what kind of scum are living out there. Stay away. You really know parenting, man. 
I'm I hear that teens listen really well to that kind of attitude and an approach to to advice. I'm I'm pretty sure Chloe will listen to you pretty damn soon. Anyway, let's go back to Finer. We have tools, we're going to use them for mayhem. Or to fix a camera, I don't know. Whatever strikes my fancy, damn it. Wonder if anything has changed. Pretty, sh pretty sure it hasn't. Hard to believe Chloe Yeah, all that has changed is now that I, we ago. have the tools. So let's do it. You found the tools. Sweet. You can sit at my desk and fix your camera. You know, you actually need to turn that to drive screws, right? You can't just wiggle it around. So? I can't fix this thing. Are these your new photos? Yeah, I just took them today. Let me see. Booyah, you skank. Karma's a bitch. Oh yeah, Chloe approves. Nice framing, too. Are you shitting me? That asshole's everywhere. Wait, I've seen this before. Uh, no way. When did you take this? You took this photo, you brat? In the bathroom today. You set off the alarm. That's why Nathan raged after you. It totally makes sense. You hella saved my life. Now tell me the truth, Max. I do wish they had framed that picture a little bit wider because all the picture shows is the rim of a bucket and a blue butterfly in it. There is no hint of bathroom in there. So maybe I guess Chloe really loved that bucket and it's like, wow, this is my favorite bucket in the world. How did you take a picture of that? And uh, that is how she knows, you know. Anyway, we want to be truthful to Chloe. I was there, hiding in the corner. Damn, you are a ninja. A ninja would have cut Nathan's head off. I just took a butterfly photo. That is so badass. Oh yeah, I almost wet myself when I saw the gun. So, did you recognize me? Nope. Not at all. Your hair and clothes are so different. I hope so. I'm sure this is all so weird to you after coming back. Like you said, it's been that kind of day. So you must have overheard our conversation. I really do wish you could just say, just, just freaking say it. I totally did. Just a bit. There is no way you didn't hear every single vowel. Okay, I only heard something about money, drugs, but that's it. Now for the big question, did you tell anybody? But it's really just more telling of Max's personality that she's just not direct. She's not going to tell her exactly what she should say. She's going to just skirt around shit and be a chicken shit. Or no. No, I didn't know what to do. I don't blame you. That's some intense shit. Maybe I should go to the principal. You guys catch that stock animation? STUCK ANIMATION TIME! The principal? Are you still 12? That drunk jackass only cares about cash from Blackwell Academy. Don't trust him. Seriously, I didn't blab to anybody. Promise. Thank God. I'll tell you more someday. And I seriously owe you, Max. I, uh, know it was your birthday last month. This was my real father's camera. I want you to have it. That's so cool you remembered my birthday. But I can't take this. Of course you can. My dad would be pissed if I never used it, and now I know it'll be used awesomely. And I'll snag this picture as a symbol of our reunion. Cool? Yes, of course it's cool. Thank you. This camera is so sweet. Now that we get that mushy shit out of the way, I feel like stage diving. Let's thrash this place. You're crazy. Yep, yep, I'm fucking insane in the brain. Let's dance. Shake that phony white ass. Or take my picture with your new camera. <laughs> There's another one of those scenes that are just full of sincerity and just heartwarming feelings. And this is one of those scenes that really pulls you into the game. It's just very well done, very well written, and also just conveyed just right. It is a thumbs up scene for everybody involved. This is good stuff, man. Let's take a picture of this pretty lady. Oh, yeah. 
should add it to her intimate collection, if you know what I mean. This song fucking rolls. Can't dance, hippie? Come on. Rock out, girl. Yes, break it down, Rex. It's the doggy paddle. Yo, turn it off. Turn it off. How many times have I told you to stop blasting that punk shit? Dude, the music's not even on! It's pretty upsetting how she's home alone Asshole. and she can't play uh, music. It's kind of weird. Oh, no fucking way. You need to hide now. My stepdad will kill me if he finds you here. Chloe, what's going on? Open this door, please. Chill, I'm changing. Is that okay? Max, find a place to hide now. Chloe, I'm coming. What are you doing? Chloe, anyway, stalling. we're not going I'm to changing. hide. Give me a uh, this minute. is what I did in my very Don't first playthrough through. I did open this up just now. to see what happens. Please. One second. My and in fact, stuck. I didn't realize I'm that you can rewind soldier. this and not have Chloe, that happen. But the then I was like, you know what? What the hell? Do, what do you think I am? 12? I'm not I'm going to hide. <laughs> this is retarded. I'm going to stand door. right here and One, just say, look, I'm two, just a friend. Three. Shit. What's going on in here? Why is she here? None of your business. I don't like strangers here. Stop freaking. She's not a stranger. This is my friend. Great. Another one of your friends. I ordered you to never go through my files. You obviously have. I didn't touch your files, David. I could care less about your files. You care about starting shit, Chloe, and it's getting old. Totally was not me. Damn, Chloe, you're just a snoop. One of my guns is missing. Did you take it? Oh god, I didn't take your stupid gun. You do know I believe in gun control? Wait, is that grass? You been token up again in here? Oh yeah, guns, weed. You were tripping balls. I'm sick of your disrespect. Tell me the truth. That's an order. It's not my pot. It's from Max. Is this true? It really put me off how quickly, and this is something that is shared among a lot of the player race, how quickly Chloe shifts the blame onto Max. You do have to realize that this is something that we will realize right now. That Chloe has her reasons. But I'm not going to risk my scholarship. No way. That's not mine. Oh, of course not. I'm sure Chloe gets all the best shit, right? I'm sure she gave you good friend rates. Why don't you get off my crack? Stop taking your war rage out on high school girls. You haven't seen rage, you little... Fuck you, pig! Listen, you asked for that. You know exactly what you're doing. For your own good, you should stay away from Chloe. She's a loser and she'll only drag you down. Stick to doing your homework. Listen, David, I have proof you got all up in Kate Marsh's face today. Surveillance proof. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You only think you're tough and clever. This too shall pass. Now clean this pigsty up. I'm sorry, Chloe. I didn't know what to do. Whatever. Everybody bails on me. Even my best friend, Max. Don't you? So done with everybody in this town. I wish I hadn't even seen you. As if you care. Color me out of here. David was such a mean bastard to Chloe. What if I had stepped up to help? This is really where shit got real for me. Like where I figured, hey, this is not just a high school thing with uh, time, time, powers, and haha, ha, so much fun. Like there's some like deeper issues that this game is going to be dealing with. And uh, basically where role playing is concerned is where Max starts seeing just how much shit Chloe has had to I swallow. I could change this so I don't hurt Chloe. Uh, you could, you could, Max, but instead you are going to own up to what you've done and just try to fix it from here on out. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a very well done moment. It just gives you all of the reasons in the world both to help her out from here on out and to see just how shitty her life has become and she had every reason to try to not get blamed for it because she knew... That this man is abusive, both verbally and physically, is not something that she is uh, ready to uh, confront. And this, this war veteran in her freaking house is suddenly in charge of her life. 
So I really, really loved this scene, even though it was a, kind of a, a bit of a scumbag. It was, it was just absolutely great. And this is basically the reason why you can forgive so much to Life is, for Life is Strange, because there's so many great things in it. That the bad stuff is like, yeah, it's there, but you know what? It, it just doesn't matter. It does so many things right that when the bad stuff comes, you just cringe and move on because you know the overall creation is just a freaking flawed masterpiece. That's why I like it so much. That's why it really touched me. It touched me in really private and places I that I cannot even tell forever. you. Right now. So why do I feel like I was just here? Oh. This is the exact same path I was on during my nightmare today. And the game just crashed on me, so sorry if you noticed any kind of editing glitch. Hello, cute little squirrel. You and me. Stare contest. I'm gonna win. Oh, I totally won that stare contest. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we gotta go back. There's a big-ass rock over here. We have a collectible to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This photo is going to be prize-winning. Oh, this will be a great nature shot. Stay still, bro. I super got secret, you. super ending. Here we come. It's going to be amazing. And uh, there's nothing else. Yeah, there's one more picture to be taken, but it's not back there. And I don't think there was anything to be seen, nothing to interact with. It's just a massive place of empty. I feel like I'm in my nightmare again. Do -do 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 -do. It's trash. Oh no. Max, get your panties in a tizzy. There's trash. Ooh. Oh, thank goodness that he uh, took a picture himself so I can have a memento of his suffering. I owe you. Thanks for today. I'll call back later. Okay, I swear. No problem. And you still have to tell me your big secret. I play World of Warcraft. There you go. I don't know if she's still... Uh, she probably doesn't still Earth do it. so lucky. They can always escape. But she definitely knows what's what in the world of the Warcraft. She adds to her nerd cred by commenting on it. Wowzer, Chloe drew that to mark our tree for it. So we'd always be able to find each other in case of emergency. <sighs> and then you left her. Ugh. Ooh. A tree haiku? How pretty. Turn this way haiku? now or face the lonely on a How tree. pretty. I never look back. There's a few things to be found in this area. Looks like the youth of Arcadia Bay still come up here to party. I never made it. A little bit of graffiti, a few kind of small How long has that cryptic been here? clues. Not really all that important, but it's just knife flavor. Clearly, the Bigfoots are everywhere. Doo -doo. Too bad it's locked. I remember racing up and down the steps. Oh, your parents ever let you just run around the town without any supervision? I guess if you're 12, you can do that kind of stuff. Weird. Those glyphs remind me of the wind. For sure said reference. I forget what it was for. I mean, what? I, I, maybe Zelda? I don't know. It's a reference to the symbol of the wind in some, in some pop culture reference that I just cannot catch right now. Here's another picture in the last one of this episode. Disturb Chloe. There you go. This would be a nice photo of Chloe, framed by the sun. Already with the worship. You know, let's find out what the hell she says when you don't see the surveillance. She looks really pissed. I should not have denounced her earlier. She'll get over it. You sure you don't want to be alone? Sit down if you want. Max is not really into apologizing, so we're going to go with this. Are you pissed at me? I just wanted some backup. Who just threw the blame all in my you. lap, though? What do you expect and me to do? And David is indeed a step douche. I'm sorry you had to experience it firsthand. You have to live with him. Has he always been this way? Ever since my desperate mom dragged his ass to our home. 
I never trusted David. I certainly don't regret taking that picture. I'm glad I took his photo with Kate. Just in case. Why was he all up in her shit? He has some kind of weird agenda. He has a lot of secret files. Rambo still thinks he's gathering enemy intelligence. Did you take a peek? Duh. Well, yeah. I couldn't help it. Never change. What did you find? Creepy photos of Kate Marsh. Other Blackwell students. Unspeakable things. This dude takes his job too seriously. He still thinks he's at war or something. He's a total surveillance fetish. Why are there spy cams in the house? Sometimes ignorance is bliss. No wonder I'm so miserable. Everybody in this town knows everybody's secrets. Really? That's all he got? Oh, well. <laughs> that was a bit disappointing, but hey, it was different. What's Nathan's secret? He's an elite asshole who sells bad shit cut with laxative. And he dosed me with some drug in his room. What? I met him in some shithole bar that didn't card me. He was too rich for the place and too wasted, and he kept flashing bills. Just tell me what happened, Chloe. Now. I was an idiot. I thought he was so blazed it would be an easy score. You needed money that bad? Actually, yes. I owe big time. And I thought I'd have enough for me and Rachel if she showed up. You know what, Chloe? Uh, give me a moment here because this reminds me. I totally forgot, but this reminds me. This is not. This is not going to go unpunished. So let me go in here and add a name to the list. David Madsen. Excellent. Now let's talk about the other shithead in our lives. So, what about you and Nathan? We went to his room at Blackwell. We drank, and I laughed at his rich kid bullshit. He was one step ahead and put something in my beer. God, Chloe. I can't believe this. I mean, I do. Then what? I know I passed out on the floor. I woke up and that perv was smiling, crawling towards me with a camera. Go on. Everything was a blur. I tried to kick him in the balls and broke a lamp. Nathan freaked, so I managed to bum rush the door and get the hell out. <sighs> Max, it was insane. Even more shit that has Chloe has had to go through. It's a pretty battered down character. We there's really no question why she does the things she does and the way she feels. I'm so furious. I am so furious. I can't even speak. They're on the list, Max. Don't do worry then? about it. I figured I would make him pay me to keep quiet. So we met in the bathroom. And he brought a gun. That was Nathan's last mistake. I'm sure the coppers are in his pocket, so let's do the other option. He's still dangerous, Chloe. Not just to you. Good thing you didn't tell anyone. Nathan Prescott better watch his back now. I won't always be there to save you. You were here today, Max. You saved me. I'm still tripping on that. Seeing you after all these years feels like... Destiny. Don't really get why she gets so sad hearing that. She just has mood swings. It's just, it's just understandable, I guess. If this is destiny, I hope we can find Rachel. I miss her, Max. Yes, tell me more about this person that replaced me. I really want to hear a lot about her. This shit pit has taken away everyone I've ever loved. I'd like to drop a bomb on Arcadia Bay and turn it to fucking glass. Maybe you ate bad crabs or something. Why am I here again? It's all food poisoning, don't worry about it. Hallucinations, it's, it's all part of the symptoms, don't worry about it. You'll be fine, just take some Tums. You'll be just fine. You'll be A-OK, -okay, Max, you'll be just fine. There's no way uh, any dangers will happen to you in this nightmare. Is Chloe still up there? I have to find out. It's actually a bunch of ways you can die. Not like die, but it's uh end of game state and you had to rewind and all that good stuff but you can get through with minimal effort that is basically the only place where you have to rewind for sure and then if you're not completely and utterly incompetent or not a whole bunch of uh, logs over there you can just go to this little corner and not get murdered by it 
Anakin is okay, you don't have to use the time powers, you just need to have a little bit of power to restoration. And then, I don't remember what you need to re No, I don't think you even need to rewind here. All you need to do is run forward this tree trunk. It took me forever to figure this out, by the way. It was kind of shameful that I couldn't figure out when I was supposed to go forward. In any case, we have arrived here. Now they're supposed to have newspaper. That will be a premonition! <laughs> My absolute, absolute favorite song in the whole game. Place. Oh no. The tornado is headed straight for the town. Chloe, you're here. I'm back. Oh my lord, this is real. It's real. Oh man, this sucks. Max, what's going on? You totally blacked out. I didn't black out. I had another vision. The town is going to get wiped out by a tornado. Oregon gets about five tornadoes every 20 years. You just saw No, no, I saw it! I could actually feel the electricity in the air. Come on, take a breath, okay? Chloe, I'm not crazy. But there's something else I have to tell you. Something hardcore. Talk to me, Max. I had the same vision earlier in class. When I came out of it, I discovered I could reverse time. Like I said, not crazy. But hi, right? Listen to me. How do you think I saved you in the bathroom? By reversing time? Yeah, sure. I saw you get shot, Chloe. Saw you actually die. I was able to go back and hit the fire alarm. Okay, I see you're a geek now with a great imagination, but this isn't anime or a video game. People don't have those powers, Max. I don't know what I have, but I have it. And I'm scared shitless. You need to get high. It's been a hell insane fucking day. What the hell is this? Snowflakes? It's like 80 degrees. How? Climate change. Or a storm is coming. Max, start from the beginning. Tell me everything. That's it for the next episode. It really gets uh, all kinds of praise for me. It was really well done. Worth knowing that Nathan doesn't give a shit about this, no. There might be an indication that they had a different plan for the character at the very beginning of the story. It's a very neat first episode. It uh, gets a little dark, a little deep with a few things, but still very much just brushing the surface, setting up all the characters, setting up all of the stories, and, and basically uh, setting up the motivation for the characters, all of them, their interaction between one another. I can't say I was 100% hooked at this point, but I was definitely into the game and I definitely wanted to keep playing. Alright, so let's see the decisions that we took. It is, like I promised, the path least traveled. We hid the truth from Principal Wells. Only 34% of people have done that. Made fun of Victoria, which really surprised me a lot. Why would you comfort this bitch? Maybe later you feel like you did the wrong thing, but at that time, man, she's like the worst piece of trash ever. You took a photo of David, nobody really wanted to do that, but I 
judging by that. And only 1% is also surprised me, a, surprised me a great deal because by that time, we don't really get no Chloe that well. It's like, you know, she just totally blamed the weed on your ass. I guess you see the result and you just rewind and say, wow, that was really messed up. I don't want that to happen. So probably that's what happens there. Maybe a lot of more people initially say, no, no way, this is bullshit. She's blaming me for nothing I've done. And then they realize, holy shit, the consequences of that are kind of bad. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, so not a whole lot of people stick with that decision. Interesting, interesting indeed. And all the others, the, the small things, is a 50-50 split whether to sign the petition or not. Whether to let Daniel draw the portrait, which was also weird. You would normally let this guy draw a portrait, right? I think help Alyssa, which is 16% only people. And I'm assuming that 16% is simply because they missed it. Her getting beaten up by uh, football. You know, race Kate Slate, which I am assuming is just people missing the option because normally you would. Uh, what are the plan? This is just a plan for the future. Is the basically the only one that is in the majority because we are going to keep it alive, which is the even less path least traveled. I touched Dana's president pregnancy <laughs> touch Dana's pregnancy test, which is something that very few people have done. I have no idea the consequences of that. I'm assuming that Dana just doesn't really like you very much anymore. Reorganize Victoria's photos. Another thing that I feel is just people not really looking in that direction. They just don't get to do it because holy shit is one of the most awesome things you can do in a room. Wrote on the RV. I actually missed this on most of my playthroughs and uh, only realized you could do it after when the decisions show up. Save the bird. Bro class is no Chloe snow globe, which is something that probably most people simply rewind because it's a shitty thing to do. I read left evidence of the files being rifled through, which is another thing that is very seldom done. I am assuming that it's just David saying, oh, you're reading from my files, blah, 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 and there's no other consequences to that. Uh, and I read David's files, which was a, 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 a consequence on having to get that done. So we got two majority choices simply because we were choosing the other thing that kind of trumped it. Anyway, those are the decisions. Good stuff. We're going to continue on this path. And I very much hope that you are enjoying it as much as I do, which is a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, I bid you farewell.